We have officially had our first few weeks of cold weather here in the North Carolina foothills, mainly in the mornings, but it is getting pretty chilly down into the 40s. Now is the time that I bring out my plethora of winter riding gear, and I hope you guys keep riding. So I ride year round, but the biggest preface that I have to put when I'm saying I'm gonna help you guys continue to ride year round is my location. I am in the foothills of North Carolina, so it is a pretty mild zone, but it does get chilly here. Snow days here, everything shuts down and it's a holiday. So it's a rare, rare occurrence, but it, it can happen. For the most part though, January, February is typically the coldest. The first thing that you need to think about while you're riding, there's two kinds of people that I've met. There's the kind of people that are willing to sit there and take clothes off while they ride, or there's the people that are okay with freezing their butt off for the first 10 minutes of the ride. I am in the, uh, the, the first group. I tend to overdress, and then after I get a little warmed up, I take some clothes off, I stick them on my back, or I, I, I hide them somewhere. And what I mean by that is that you will warm up on your ride. This does take a bit of trial and error, but once you warm up, you will more than likely wanna take off some of your winter gear. This way you don't get soaking wet from all of the sweat, which in turn will make you extremely cold when you stop riding or when you start soft pedaling, when you bonk, you're just gonna be soaked head to toe. So this leads me to my first point, dress in layers. Anytime you do anything that's a, a physical activity, but you're trying to stay warm, running, any activity, I, I suggest you dress in layers and invest in good layers. Now gloves are probably one of my favorite topics to talk about when it comes to winter. I need to put those back in their bag. When it comes to winter riding, this is probably the most subjective category of winter clothing out there. It is the gloves because for most people, unless you're, you know, a reptile or something, uh, if it is cold outside, you're going to be trying your, your body, not you, you're not thinking about this, but it's going to be trying to warm up your vital organs. So typically when you're riding your chest area all the way down to like halfway down your mid thigh, it really doesn't get that cold uh, unless it's in the teens out for me. But what does get cold is everywhere that the blood is leaving, which is your fingers, your toes, hands, feet. That's what I'd really try to keep warm. Your ears, those can hurt. So gloves, I, I still do layers because it's also one of the first things that can warm up. So you've got different options for gloves here. You've got like your typical, these are just like standard gloves here. I won't go into too much detail on them. The uh, three pair that I wear like religiously, I have these really thick ones here that I got one size too big. Uh, and I'll, sh I'll tell you why in a second. They do have the little thing here so you can use your touch screen on your phone. I recommend that because there's nothing worse than trying to stop on the side of the road or on the trail and you have to pull your gloves and everything off just so you can do something on your phone. So make sure you get some that have that. That's creature comfort, but every glove should have that from now on. The reason I got a size too big is because these are very heavy duty and I only wear them if it's like, depends on how I'm feeling, but if it's below 35, I'll wear these, but I only wear them with wool liners. These wool liners, they're from Defeat. They're freaking awesome. Uh, I love wool. I'm a big, big, big proponent of wool. So you actually put on a wool liner. Again, layers. The more layers you can get, the better. The more wind protection you can get, the better. You can tell I have used the crap out of these. Put on that wool liner. You stick this on, it's, I still get a pretty good movement, pretty good range of motion, but it could be a snowstorm and I can wear this combination. Like my hands are already hot in here. This is my go-to, double up on your gloves, thank me later, it's great. But that is for probably two months out of the year, let's say January, February. Right now, my favorite glove out on the market is literally these little guys. It's the classic cycling sport gloves. They're lightweight, uh, they've got good little grippers on them, nothing fancy about them, but what they do have that I think is amazing is the wind blockage. I would say 70% of how cold it is when you're riding is all wind. So I have had some lobster claw gloves. Lobster claws are the ones where like, you have your pointer finger and all of these are together and they're supposed to be super warm, but they had no wind resistance at all. So the wind was just coming straight through them. Yeah, my hands were okay in them, but dude, as soon as the wind would blow or you're riding a road bike, like it sucked. I got rid of those things. These being as lightweight as they look, 
they block the wind. That is what they were designed for, is uh, wind resistance. And I can wear these down to about 40 degrees and I feel perfectly fine with these on. So again, that is just some suggestions. I get something that has high wind resistance but is lightweight because there's nothing, nothing worse than trying to ride your mountain bike and you can't feel your handlebars whatsoever. That's another reason why I am a big proponent for a, a single speed in the winter time because you don't have to shift and that worked really well with big thick gloves. <laughs> to reiterate, we got lightweight gloves down to about 40 degrees when it gets really cold out. I will double up with these. And then my last big uh, kind of pro tip that I was taught uh, by uh, an actual professional. If it's down in like the teens and you're going for a bike ride, instead of really doubling up with the wool and these, get you some latex gloves, wear latex gloves, shove them in here. It's freaking an oven when you do that. There's no heat escaping. They don't breathe at all. So when you're done riding your bike and you pull that latex glove off, it's gonna be a puddle in there if you rode your bike hard. But you're gonna be warm. Um, another thing that I do, kind of a pro tip, I guess, if you wanna call it that. Uh, I take hot hands, I stick them on the top of my hand because I don't, you don't wanna wear hot hands and try to grab onto the handlebar, right? Because it's gonna be right here, it's gonna feel weird. So I put them on the top of my hand, that way the little residual wind that does get through is gonna hit the hot hand first and start heating my hand up. That's how I really keep my hands warm. I focus a lot on keeping my hands warm and my toes warm because those are the two things that really go downhill quick. This is what I recommend. If you recommend something different, please let me know below because I am always up to trying a new glove situation. Next up on the menu is down at your toes. We're we'll gonna be talking about some socks that I have, I have to go find. I do recommend, yet again, some wool socks. Um, merino wool is the best stuff ever. Basically, once it gets wet, it doesn't get cold. So if you've ever worn a t-shirt and you've sweated in it and it's 30 degrees out, you freeze your butt off. With this stuff, it, it doesn't get cold and it also doesn't stink, which is phenomenal. Some, some wool socks, like these are 20 bucks worth every penny. Another thing you wanna get for your toes is definitely a set of shoe covers. So all of our shoes that we wear are made to breathe because they expect us to be doing physical activity. We're gonna be riding mountain bikes, right? And it's gonna be 95 degrees in the middle of the summer. So they have to breathe. That doesn't correlate well to the winter time. So what booties do, you put them over your shoe, they have a place at the bottom for your shoe platform to contact the pedal. They're gonna work whether you have flat pedals or clipless pedals, it doesn't matter. Uh, these booties are going to insulate as well as cover up all the ventilation holes. So booties and wool socks, that's what you want for your toes. You can also, a little pro tip again, I don't know why I keep calling them pro tip because I feel like an idiot saying that, but you can take toasty toes, which is what I prefer over the hot hands. Uh, they have a little adhesive backing on them and you're supposed to stick them on the bottom of your sock, slip it in. I've found that that can get way, 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 way too hot. It also feels weird because you have something in between your foot and the bottom of your shoe. So it's just, it makes you feel off when you're riding your bike. So I take it and there's always ventilation right on the top of your shoe, right? I take the adhesive part, slap it there, then put the booty over top to really hold it into place. And then any wind that gets in through that ventilation is gonna be nice and warm. And if your toes start to get a little bit cold, you just lift them up just a hair, make them, make them touch top of your shoes there and it's nice and toasty. I 100% recommend investing into some toasty toes and high hands. They have saved me on many of the teen rides that I've been on. I had some people asking me that were very, very new to cycling. They're like, dude, it's starting to get cold. How do you keep riding? Uh, because what I own is not cutting it. If you have any questions, if you wanna know anything else about winter riding, um, I will certainly do my best to let you guys know. But I just wanted to push this out, do a little quick video because it is getting cold. That's what I got for you. I'll see everybody in the next one. Bye-bye. Good job, buddy.
Contra. 